Uh, it doesn't make a difference. I've got a face mask on. <laughs> Good morning, church. Welcome to uh, Sunday, the 21st of February. It is great to be able to share with you this morning and just be able to be together. Even if you're at home or you're on a device out somewhere, welcome to Buckskin Church. My name is Stuart Lake and I'm one of the pastors here and it's just great to be able to uh, welcome you here this morning. We're going to get into a time of worship in a, in a minute, but I just want to ask you if you have any prayer requests at all, if you have any praise reports, if you have something to be thankful for this morning, please send us a message. We'd love to be encouraged as a body of church. We'd love to pray for you. If you have anything that you need prayer for, no matter how big, no matter how small, please contact us. The number is uh, 07579-023, no, 025, sorry, 376. You can send an SMS, a WhatsApp, or you can even write it in the chat on YouTube or Facebook so that we can pray for you and uh, really stand with you uh, wherever you're at. But let's just pray together. Let's just really come with expectant hearts, hearts to receive and to just hear God's voice today. We're going to start this morning uh, singing, we stand and lift up our hands. So this morning, wherever you are, let's stand. Let's raise up our hands to God and let's really give him all the glory and all the worship. Let's pray. Let's stand together and pray this morning. Father, we want to honor you this morning. We want to bring you all the praise, Lord, no matter what's gone on this week, in the busyness of life, oh God, in in the busyness of half term and, and work and all the stress and pressures that are our Lord Jesus. Lord, we stop and we pause and we take time to focus on you. We take time to say we will worship and glorify the Lord God Almighty, the one who was, who is, and who is to come. And so this morning I pray, Father, wherever, wherever we are, Lord God, whether in the building or at home right now, Lord God, whether we're on a device or whether we're going to watch this in the future, Lord God, Lord, I pray, Father, that you, O God, would meet us right where we are, that your presence, O God, would minister to our hearts and to our lives. Holy Spirit, we invite you. Father God, inhabit the praises of your people, we pray. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Bless you, church. Let's spend some time in worship together.
much. Thank you. We're going to carry on and we're going to continue to pray for some various uh, situations which are going on in, in church right now. Uh, we've had a few messages come in, so thank you for sending them. First of all, a few praise reports. Um, just to say that Steve Machel has made it to Kenya, which is a great praise report. So let's pray for him as he continues on the journey to Chad and pray for the family who are left here. But thank God that he's got that far already. Someone is thanking God and giving him praise for spring flowers this morning, that they are a beautiful sign of hope and peace and, and just a sign of, of, of all goodness that is even happening throughout this difficult season that we're in. So many people are thanking God for that. Uh, but let's pray. We've got quite a few prayer requests coming in. We have... Um, uh, let's pray for Dave and Dillis, his neighbor, uh, who's, uh, Jenny's daughter, Cheryl, who has uh, more radiotherapy to come and is in a lot of pain. Let's pray for, that she may know the healing of God upon her. Let's pray also for uh, Phil, another person who's had issues and is going for further CT scans. Continue to pray for them. Let's pray for comfort and peace for, for Kathy Boyce and for Dave and, and Kirsty Webb as they continue to uh, prepare for the funeral plans for their loved ones. Let's pray for Whitney's father. Walter, Shirley's daughter is a bit of a, prayer, uh, a praise report. Shirley's daughter has been released from the hospital, so we give praise to God for that. Uh, it's really good, but let's continue to pray for her as she has oxygen at home, that she will continue to recover from COVID. And then Dave and Kirsty have sent prayer requests today. David is struggling with pain in his chest, and Kirsty has pain in her hip. So let's just really pray and believe to see God being faithful in all these situations. Let's pray today. Father, we thank you that you are faithful. And Lord, it seems, Lord God, that uh, the more we pray, the more the more prayer requests we, we receive. And Lord, that is so awesome. Lord, that you are at work, Lord God, that we can see your faithfulness in prayer requests of past, Lord God, that we can see that you've been faithful. Lord Jesus, we thank you, Father, that uh, for Steve Machel getting all the way to Kenya. Lord, we pray that you would help him as he continues his journey on to Chad. Lord, we pray that you would be with the family here, oh God. Lord, we thank you Father, for for uh, your hand upon Catherine, Lord God, getting her out of hospital. We pray you'd continue to put your hand of healing upon her. And Lord, for all those here, Lord God, we think of Dave Webb, we think of Christy, we think of Walter, Lord God, we think of Phil, we think of Cheryl, Lord Jesus, so many people that need a touch of God in their lives, a touch of, of your hand, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you that when we read your word, just one touch of your cloak and, you, and, and, and the woman was healed, Lord Lord God, just one word and you healed someone. Just one touch of the eyes and you gave them sight. And so, Lord God, we pray, Father, that you would do that in their lives, Lord Jesus. Lord, that just one word over them, oh God, one touch of your cloak, oh God, they would see your healing hand upon their lives, Lord Jesus, for you are able to heal. You are the God who heals and we put our trust and our faith in you. Lord, I pray for comfort and peace for Kathy, for Dave and for uh, Kirsty right now. Lord, for all all those that are going through challenge, that are experiencing loss, Lord Jesus, at this, at this time, we pray, oh God, that your comfort and your peace would rest upon each one of those in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, and amen. So it is uh, a great pleasure, as I said, to be leading the service, but we're going to get into the rest of our service and we got the fun thing of announcements. Everybody loves announcements. Hallelujah. Amen. So our first announcement is if you want to give, there are various ways to give this morning. You can do it. It should be coming onto your screen. Uh, you can do it by bank transfer, uh, SMS, online, whatever it is. We just want to say thank you for your faithful giving to God's house. It is such a blessing to the body of Christ. And we just want to say thank you because as a result of your giving, we're able to continue to support projects like Child's Trust and others. So thank you so much for your continued faithfulness to give faithfully to the work of the church. Uh, we want to ask you if you uh, are, are, are not yet aware of it, there is some exciting news that Wednesday the 17th of March is the prayer course number two. This is the second of our prayer courses. There's already been prayer course number one, but this one is called Unanswered Prayer. 
How many of us have unanswered prayers? I think each and every one of us can say that we have unanswered prayers. And so we're going to do this as a church. We're going to journey together. Just as we journeyed through prayer and fasting, we're going to go through the unanswered prayer course together one as one church uh, for five weeks from the 17th of March. Please get involved. Register on Church Week because we want to be together in this as we share the journey of prayer together. Uh, I would encourage you, if, if you are there, please please send us hello. Uh, don't be shy. Just say hi. We would love to say, see each and every one of your faces. We would love to, to get to know uh, how you guys are doing. If you want to share a, a hello or a joke or something, please share it. We want to hear from you. Some of us in the building don't get to see you all the time, but we are family and we want to share together. Uh, in the f- future weeks to come, on the 7th of March, we're starting a new series called Words from the Cross. And this is going to be a, a great series about the seven phrases that Jesus said on the cross. And it's going to end on Good Friday service. So please make sure you're joining us every Sunday, uh, particularly in March, as we build up to Easter, as we anticipate probably the greatest moment in, in our calendar, the greatest moment in human history was the moment that Jesus died and rose again. So make sure you join us for the Words from the Cross series. You don't want to miss it. Don't forget we have our morning prayers on Tuesday and Friday at 8 a.m. Both of those days. Come and join us. Half an hour, short, sharp prayers so that we can pray and intercede. If you need prayer, don't hesitate to ask. Just send us a message to prayer at buckskin.org or to the church phone number so that we can continue to pray and intercede for you. I'm going to pray for Will now. Uh, He's about to come up and we're about to have a reading of Psalm uh, 116 by Erica. So let me pray for him as he comes after the reading of the word. Lord Jesus, we thank you for Will. Lord, we thank you for uh, the gift and the ability you've given him to speak your word with truth and with integrity. Lord, we pray, Lord God, that you would give him the words to say, Father, that they would both be encouraging and challenging. They would be words that help us and and stir us to action, O oh God, we pray. So Lord, be exalted, be glorified, be magnified, we ask in your name. Amen. Amen. Good morning. The reading is taken today from Psalm 116. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came over me. I was overcome by distress and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Lord, save me. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the unwary. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return to your rest, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. For you, Lord, have delivered me from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I trusted in the Lord when I said, I am greatly afflicted. In my alarm I said, everyone is a liar. What shall I return to the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfil my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful servants. Truly, I am your servant, Lord. I serve you just as my mother did. For you have freed me from my chains. I will sacrifice a thank offering to you and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, a big thank you to Erica uh, for reading Psalm 116 to us. My name is Will, and I'm one of the pastors here. And this morning we're going to explore this psalm, which is a psalm about deliverance. Um, how was last Sunday for you? It was Valentine's Day. And as I look around and I see a number of, uh, well, they're all fellas here this morning in the building with me, I wonder what they did to show uh, their wives how much they loved them. And um, I was just looking on the internet this morning just to see what some people have done for Valentine's Day. And apparently David Beckham 
decided that he would buy his wife Victoria a Bulgari necklace. And guys, that's a really good idea. It only cost him eight million dollars. Okay, so I don't know if you lived up to that expectation. But there's one person who goes one better in terms of cost, and that is Tom Cruise. And for his, uh, I think, wife at the time, it was, uh, I think it was Katie. Was it Katie? Can't remember now. Uh, but actually, he spent 20 million pounds, and he bought her a Gulfstream jet. You see, when we love people, very often we will want to show them how much we love them. And uh, if you notice, the psalm starts with these words. Let's have the next slide, please, Munya. It says, I love the Lord. I love the Lord. And with this morning, we're going to think about this psalm of deliverance, and we're going to think about what the psalmist did, because he says, I love the Lord. And I've got three questions for you to start with, and these are really easy questions for you to answer. The first question is, do you, do you love God? And maybe you're sat there going, yeah, I do. Yeah, I love God. The second question I have for you is, well, why do you love God? Why do you have those feelings? Why do you show, express that devotion? And then thirdly, how do you show your love for God? It's very easy, isn't it, to say those words, I love you. And the psalmist says, I love the Lord. But he goes on to show and shows why he does love God and how he expresses that love towards uh, Father God. If you want a bit of background, some people like to do a bit of background to the psalm. We know that this psalm doesn't have a title. And we also know that we don't know who the author is. Um, It is a psalm, it's called a a Hallel psalm. The word Hallel means praise. It is the fourth of the Egyptian Hallel psalms. Now, you probably need to go away and research this yourself, but from Psalm 113 to 116, these are Hallel psalms. And the emphasis is particular, is the escape from Egypt. It was a psalm that was used for corporate worship. It was a psalm that was used for personal worship as well. It was sung at celebrations like Pentecost and Tabernacles. It was sung at new uh, new moon festivals and the Feast of Dedication. These psalms were also sung at Passover. And it's believed that actually, probably the night that Jesus was betrayed um, and arrested, that at the Last Supper they would have sung this psalm. Because it says, I think in John, they went, they sang a psalm and then they went out to the Garden of Gethsemane. So here we have words that Jesus would have taken on his lips. Now, the thing is, we don't really know what this psalm relates to. So it's a Hillel psalm, so it could be to do with the Exodus, which we find um, in the book of Exodus. And it talks about the cords of death being around a person. And that could refer to the time of Egypt when the people of God were restricted. It's thought it might might refer to the exile when the people were in Babylon and they wanted to return. And again, they were constricted. And this, this constriction is described as death. The third possibility, and we really don't know which one of these it is, it was a psalm that was written by, or relates to King Hezekiah's experience. And we know that in Isaiah 38, chapter 38, that Hezekiah is going to die. And he says to the Lord, can I, have a, can I live longer? And God actually gives him another 15 years. It could have been that. We do not know. The psalm has a very clear structure. It's made up of seven stanzas. It's got three sections. The first section is found in verses 1 to 6. The second section is found in verse 7 to 11. And the third section is found 12 to 19. So if you like that kind of stuff, go away and have a look at it. It's a fascinating psalm. But it starts with these amazing words. I love the Lord. And that's what I want to make my key focus this morning, is we're going to talk about what it means to love God and how we show our love for God. The first section I want to talk about is the fact that actually the psalmist says, I love God because he heard my prayer. Verses 1 to 6 says, I love the Lord for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. 
because he turned his ear to me. I will call on him as long as I live. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came over me. I was overcome by trouble and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Oh Lord, save me. The Lord is gracious and righteous. And our God is full of compassion. The Lord protects the simple hearted. And when I was in great need, he saved me. And we can see that it is a psalm of deliverance. This man has been rescued by God. And his love is motivated by the fact that God heard his cry for mercy. He's heard that very simple cry, help. Whether it was King Hezekiah, whether it was the people of, in Egypt, or it was the exile. God heard their prayers. That simple prayer, help. And I want to reassure you this morning that God is listening to our very prayers. We've prayed for a number of things today. And we know as a church that we have been through a week of prayer and fasting and there have been more prayer requests. Maybe as a result that we are doing battle. We are engaging in prayer. But God is hearing our prayers and God has answered them and will continue to answer them. But probably the greatest thing we can be assured of is that God has heard our prayers and God has saved us. And being a Christian means that we have been born again, that God has given us salvation. And that means that we have been saved from sin and evil and the effect upon it on our lives. We've been saved by the power of God from the devil and from evil. We've overcome spiritual death. We've overcome hell and eternal punishment. And Jesus has brought us new life. God has surely answered our prayers. And maybe you can go back in your life and think to a point where you can say, yes, I called out to God and he saved me. Or maybe today you haven't had that moment in your life. And the wonderful thing is God does hear our prayers. And maybe today is the day that you come to God and you give your life to God and you say to him, I need to be saved. I need to be rescued. The wonderful verses we find in Ephesians 2 say this. But because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ even when we were dead in sin. It is by grace you have been saved. And that is the good news, the great news of Christianity, that God indeed hears our prayers. And he turns us from sinners into saints. God reaches down to the depths of our sin and lifts us up to heaven. God will deliver us. Rick Warren says, Through salvation our past has been forgiven. Our present is given meaning and our future is secured. And that's the wonder and the joy of Christianity, that God has paid the price that we we may be set free. I want to move on because I really want to get to my last section, my third section, which talks about what we can do to show our love for God. The second thing I want to talk about is the fact that actually God has delivered us. He has rescued us. And we find that um, in verses 6, 7, and 8. It says, The Lord protects the simple-hearted. And when I was in great need, he saved me. Be at rest once more, O my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. For you, O Lord, have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling, then I might, that I might walk before the Lord in the land of the living. And here again, he talks about the fact that we've been rescued from the grave and death, anguish, trouble, and sorrow. And again, isn't it wonderful what God has done for us? God has changed from our lives from death and tears and stumbling into walking before the Lord and having joyful celebration in the land of the living. And he says, be at soul, be at rest, my soul. Be at rest once more, O my soul. I wonder if you were to sit down and think about what God has done in your life. 
I wonder what you would actually write about. I decided I would sit down and make a list of 10 things that God had done in my life. And these are the things that I believe he has given me. He's given me joy. I don't know if you can see that on my face, but God has given me joy. Whatever the circumstances, I believe we can have joy in Christ. He has given me hope. Not just now in this life, but in the life to come. We have the promise of eternal life. And there is so much talk about death, isn't there, at the moment? And so much pain and sorrow. But as Christians, we have hope and we have the promise of eternal life. God promises us that he's going to give us peace in this situation. Whatever circumstances we find ourselves, God gives us peace. He gives us strength. Do you know the strength of God in your life? He gives us purpose, a reason to live. I was on a call this week and people were talking about um, the needs of society and how so many people struggled with their mental health. And what they discovered was that when people have purpose, when people have purpose, their lives are transformed. God has given us so much. I just need to find my notes. I've just pressed the wrong button on my iPad and the disaster's happened. I'm halfway through my list. Here we go. We're here. Okay, we've got community. As I look around, I think there's one, two, three, four, five, six, about nine of us in this building. Ten of us. But we're community. The church is community. And again, on that same call, it talked about how community makes a difference. We have the church. God has placed us in his spiritual family. We have spiritual gifts. God has blessed us with all with gifts that we can use for him. We have forgiveness. Our lives have direction. And the list goes on and on. Matt Redmond came up with 10,000 reasons. I haven't seen them all yet, but we know, don't we? There are thousands of reasons. This is what God has done in our lives. He's delivered us. He has set us free. And he says that in verse 16. He says, O oh Lord, truly, I am your servant. I am your servant, the son of your maidservant. You have freed me from my chains. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What God has done in us and for us through Jesus. I was um, looking at some apps on my uh, iPad the other day, and there's a photo app you can put on. You can put a picture of yourself, and you can see how you're going to look later in life. Um, some of us are later in life, so there's no point in using that. Um, it, the decision, obviously, for a fellow, is to, it's whether you're going to go bald or whether you're just going to go grey, looking around. There are mixture in both in this room. But actually, um, it just makes you think, well, what am I going to be like in older in life? And uh, I have to say, the pictures of me did not look good. But it made me think, what would my life look like if I didn't have Jesus? Yeah. What would it look like? What kind of person would I have become without Christ? What other things will I be able to celebrate without Christ? And it makes you realize how much Jesus has done for us when we consider our life, what our life would be like without him. God has done so much. He's heard our cries. He's saved us. He's rescued us. He's delivered us. The last thing I want to talk about is our response. You see, what the psalmist goes on to say he says in verse 12, how can I repay the Lord for his goodness to me? What can I do to repay God's love for me? With my heart of love, what can I do? And he says there are three things. And I'm going to pick these up very, first, very quickly. Firstly, he says, I will lift up the cup of salvation. I will lift up the cup of salvation. And here we have this picture of celebrating God's goodness and actually lifting up. And it was part of one of the celebrations that they would take a cup and they would lift it up and they would show everybody. And in a sense, what we're saying here is actually what we need to be doing is we need to be showing other people 
and talking about what God has done for us. You see, the cup of salvation would have been a very physical and a very visible thing. And here the psalmist says, I'm going to lift it up. I am going to be a witness. I am going to tell others about what God has done for me. And I wonder whether we do that, whether we really show our love for God by talking to others and sharing what we have with others. And I think in this COVID time, so many people are struggling, but do we share what we have through Christ? Do we share and tell other people about the difference that Jesus Christ makes in me? When uh, Paul, Lynch, Paul Lynch came and uh, talked to us as a church about um, prayer and fasting, on the last evening, he gave us a picture of a church without walls. And I think this is, this is going to be really important as we move forward. You see, he says you need to be a church without walls. And the thing about a church without walls, I would say there are two things. Firstly, that people can enter without a problem. The door is not locked. It's easy to get into. But the other thing is the church without walls is very visible. People can see what's happening inside and can see the difference of what's going on. And I believe that people need to see they need to see Jesus in us. And when they do, hopefully they will be drawn to him. Do you tell others about your faith? Do you talk to other people about what it means to be a Christian? The Apostle Paul in 2 Corinthians 5, 4, 5 verse 14 says, For the love of Christ compels us. That drives us. That is why we're going to share, because Christ loves us us the second thing i want to talk about is it says i will sacrifice a thank offering to you and call on the name of the lord he was saying i am going to sacrifice before you and if we go back to when we first became Christians, um, I remember it, I was 15 years old, I knelt on my floor in my bedroom and I prayed that prayer and I said, God, please forgive me, here is my life, please take it. And you know, at that point, I kind of laid everything out on the table. I said, Lord, this is my whole life and I give it to you now. And a decision I do not regret, a decision that has changed my life. But actually, I started off by saying to God, here is everything. And I'm sure many of you have had that same experience. You've said to God, here is everything. Here's my time. Here's my body, my mind. Here's all the resources I have. Here's my money. I give it to you. Is that still the same today? Are we really sacrificing anything before God? Because the psalmist says, I love the Lord, and therefore I am going to sacrifice. What does it cost for you to be a Christian? What difference does your love make to God? What difference does it make to you in terms of what you give? C.T. Studd, who is um, a missionary to, uh, I believe, China and Africa, says, if Jesus Christ be God and died for me, then no sacrifice can be too great for me to make for him. Are you willing to sacrifice what you have to your God? Because surely he gave everything for you. The last thing I want to talk about is the fact that the psalmist says, I will fulfill my vows to the Lord. And we find that in verse 14, but we find it repeated in verse 19. The psalmist says twice, I am going to fulfill what I have promised. I am going to give him exactly what I've promised him. I've read that um, someone said a vow is an offering, is like practicing a kind, sorry, a vow is an offering and he's practicing a kind of like a credit card it's an act of worship we are promising something we are going to do in the future we're going to pay something in the future to god what a challenge what are the vows and promises that we have made to god what I love about Mark and Julie's story is that they gave themselves to a task. 
And they said to God, we are, we're going we're gonna to help these people. And here we are, 22 years on, and thousands of lives have been changed because they made a promise to God and they kept their part of the bargain and God has kept his part of the bargain. And it is a challenge. And maybe for some of us, we're not doing what we promised God. I love this quote by a guy called Bill Waterson. He said, God put me on earth to, assert, to accomplish certain things. Right now, I am so far behind, I'll never die. Maybe you've promised God certain things and you're not doing what you promised. I would encourage you today to reset and start again. One thing I like about video games is you can play the game and then you can end the game by being killed or whatever it is, but you can start again. And Christianity is exactly the same. Maybe some of us are not what we should be and we're not doing what we should be, but actually we get that opportunity because God always gives us a second chance. And as you think back on your spiritual life, are you in a place where you are giving to God what you promised him? Are you fulfilling your vows? What I love about this psalm is the psalmist says, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And maybe over lockdown, lockdown one, two, three, you thought to yourself, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to spend time. I'm going to learn a language. I'm going to take up cooking. I'm going to take up painting. And still, it hasn't happened. You've said I will, but you haven't. But the psalmist says, this is what I'm going to do. I will. I will. I will. This week, I've been thinking about the story of Peter found in John 21. And he talks about how Jesus uh, is on the beach and the disciples had gone fishing and all of a sudden he's there and he tells Peter, you know, come in. Come on, guys, bring some fish and we're going to have breakfast. And he has a very personal conversation with Peter. And he says, to Simon, he says to Peter, Simon, son of John, do you tr truly love me more than these? And he, he looks at the fishing boats and he, he says these things. Do you love me more than these? Peter says, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Feed my lambs, Jesus says. And we go through this process three times. Do you love me? Do you truly love me? Is the question. And I want to ask you, ask you that question this morning. Because that's the challenge that came to me as I prepared. Do I truly love God? And as Peter answered, Jesus gave him his instructions. And if you truly love God today, what are you doing about it? How are you showing that love for him? My prayer for each of us is that we will respond, I believe, to what God is saying to us today, to that call to love him and to give our lives fully to him. And I want to finish with a prayer that was written by John Wesley. It's a prayer of devotion. It's a prayer of giving yourself to God afresh. And I want to pray this this morning. But for some of us, maybe today is that reset, the beginning of something new. Or maybe for others, it's that whole sense of, yes, God, I do love you. And I will continue to give myself to you, to your service, to fulfill the vows that I have made. So let's pray together, shall we? Lord, we thank you for the psalmist who clearly loved you who wanted to celebrate your goodness and your salvation, to celebrate his deliverance. And Lord, we want to thank you for your love. And now, Lord, we just want to pray this prayer together as your people. We want to give ourselves afresh to you. And so, Lord, we say, 
Lord, I am no, no longer my own, but yours. Put me to what you will. Rank me with whom you will. Let me be employed by you or laid aside for you. Exalted for you or brought low by you. Lord, let me have all things. Let me have nothing. Lord, I freely and heartily yield all things to your pleasure and your disposal. And now, O oh glorious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, you are mine, and I am yours. So be it. Amen. Let's respond in worship together, shall we? Lord, we thank you that you are good. And Lord, today we come before you.
And Lord, we come with open hands. Lord God, that psalmist said, I will lift up my hands. I will sacrifice. Father, it is an act of our will. It is an act of us turning ourselves over to you and saying, Lord God, may your will be done in my life, in my family. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, I pray right now, Father, for anyone who is in uh, part of this service, or oh God, who is just in that point where they're just saying, Lord, I need you right now. If anyone is watching this and you don't yet know Christ, and you don't yet know how to submit your will and your way to him, then I want to say it's so simple just to hand over your life to him. It's a simple prayer, but it's going to be a lifelong commitment to Christ. And if that's you this morning, if you, if you don't really yet have a committed relationship to Jesus, if you're not sure if, if your will and your way is submitted to him, if you're not sure that you're going to go to heaven when you, when you leave this earth, then I want to give you the opportunity to give your life to Christ and to say, I will sacrifice everything that I have before you. And so I'm going to say a prayer. And if that's you this morning, if, if you want to commit your life to Christ, if you want to say enough is enough, I'm tired of doing it my way. I'm tired of living my life the way I want it to do. I want to live by the way that you want me to live, Lord Jesus. I need you to take over and be Lord of my life. If that's you this morning, I'm going to say a simple prayer and I want you to repeat it after me. And believe in your heart, because it says in the word, if, if you say with your mouth and believe in your heart that I am Lord, then you shall be saved. And so this morning, let's pray together. For he is good and he is God. Repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying for me. I thank you for dying on the tree so that I may be free. I thank you that no matter what I've done, you see me as beautiful and perfect in your eyes because of Jesus. Lord Jesus, I surrender myself to you. I give my life to you today. Come into my life. Be Lord of my life. I want to live for you, Lord Jesus. May your will be done in my life, now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. If that was you this morning, I want to say just well done. Congratulations. Great decision. But it's not just today. It will be a decision for today, tomorrow, and the next day. You know, each and every one of us need to be like that psalmist and say, I will sacrifice. I will lift up my hands. I will praise his name. Church, wherever you are today, in your Monday, in your Tuesday, through to the next Sunday, may you wake up daily and say, I will love you. I will give everything to you. Bless you, church. We want to say thank you so much for joining us. May the Lord be with you. May the Lord bless you. May his hand rest upon you. And may you know him in this week more than you have in the previous. May the peace, and, the peace of God which transcends all understanding guard your hearts and minds 
in Christ Jesus, we pray. Bless you, church. We love you. Thank you so much for joining us. If you're on Zoom, uh, Darren is going to take you into the Zoom rooms just to say that uh, thank you so much to Mark and the Child's Trust for sharing all that was going on. That presentation will be taken down because of obviously privacy and stuff like that. So if you want to know more and if you want to find out more of what uh, he was saying, please contact Mark and Judy directly to find out more. But that will be taken down from Facebook and YouTube. So just to let you know. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great Sunday all. God bless and goodbye.